What's up guys? Uh, if you've seen any of my videos in the past, this video series is gonna be a little bit different. I usually talk a lot about client facing type digital marketing work and tactics and SEO and all that fun stuff. Um, but about two weeks ago, I woke up and realized that I wasn't as passionate about the client work anymore. And uh, I actually let go uh, about half of our clients. We were just growing really fast and I was doing a lot more of the bureaucracy stuff, dealing with clients, proposals, reporting. It just wasn't as fun for me anymore. Um, you know, I learned a lot, got to work with a lot of very cool businesses um, and learn and test. But, uh, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, I got into this because I love marketing and I want to focus on marketing. So I decided to push aggressively into selling on Amazon. Amazon and e-commerce and I literally just started two weeks ago but I want to create kind of a, a video journey um, putting myself on the spot too because I don't know if this is gonna make any money or not so you can sit there and laugh at me if it doesn't uh, but I really want to kind of catalog what I'm doing along the way excuse me and I'm excited about it because I get to apply all of those really cool things that I learned with all these clients over the last eight years of my life um, and put it towards building, uh, you know, not like I did building Webris as an agency, which obviously worked out well, but building something that's out of my niche um, in e-commerce. And um, I'm excited. So uh, again, in this series, you know, specifically this video, I want to talk about um, how I'm getting started on Amazon, how I selected the product, the initial steps that I'm taking. So um, selling on Amazon, you know, I truly believe, and I have a lot of friends who've done well in this space, a lot of friends who have failed in this space, so the first thing I did was really talk to them and just gather intel about how they sourced their product and, and how they grew their business or where they think they went wrong. And the number one thing that everyone told me is that it really comes down to your product selection. It really can make or break you, specifically because it's at the beginning of the process, and if you pick the wrong product, and six months into it, after spending a lot of time and resources on trying to build that, you kind of say, oh shit, well, you know, the cornerstone of my business is wrong. You can't really go back and fix it. You have to start all over. So, you know, I was very, very, very particular when selecting a product. And I actually did this months ago um, when I thought I was getting into it, long story short, um, but didn't end up starting it until two weeks ago. And the research that I did, um, Here's what I found. Here's the main points. Number one, if you're first getting started selling on Amazon, you want to pick something small, light, and easy to ship, um, and something cheap because you're going to have to buy product in bulk. And if you want to sell TVs or some sort of electronic, uh, you know, to buy a thousand TVs um, or even a hundred, even ten TVs, you know, where are you going to get those shipped to your house? The shipping cost, um, and then getting them to ship on Amazon is going to be expensive too. So, um, you know, I wanted to pick something small, something that did not rely heavily on quality again like stay I was told to stay away from electronics like even you know Apple replacement headphones because if you sell some of them and they get bad reviews, you know, you're getting all one stars, that shit's not gonna sell anymore, right? And that also has an effect on your internal Amazon store ranking and all that stuff too. So you wanna be very, very careful about the product that you select, um, especially because you're probably gonna source it from China, right? And you're not gonna have a whole lot of control uh, over entire product quality, right? You can get a sample and test the quality, but if they're sending 10,000 of them to you, you wanna make sure that's something that very cookie cutter that they can just easily make over and over. And honestly, something that's probably already made over there and sold over here anyways, right? So um, again, staying away from anything electronic, class, craftsman, um, anything too big, anything too heavy, you wanna focus on something small, right? And something light, at least to get started and get your feet wet in this because uh, you wanna make it this, what's called the MVP, right? The minimal viable product, the thing that you can get to market with for the cheapest and the quickest. And the smaller that product is and the more inexpensive it is, the less investment that you have to put into it and the easier you can get it to launch. So again, knowing that it would be something small going back to this so again I'm, I wanted to pick something small something light something uh, very you know moderate quality across whether it's made in China or here whatever um, something that can compete in a CVS or in a market wherever um, so I want to pick something like that so I knew that in order to sell something that small and that inexpensive in order for me to make money off this I'm gonna have to do just crazy volume right because if you're selling something that's between two and ten bucks if you want to make a million dollars which is not even a lot on Amazon right 
um, you've got to sell a shitload of it. So it's got to be something that's in a viral niche, something that has a ton of demand, a ton of search volume, right? Think from a marketing perspective and also a big community around it too. Because if you can get something that's a very hot community, like the SEO community is very active, very vibrant community. People are more active. People are more active on social. There's more sharing activity going on. There's just a lot of a chance for a lot more traffic online, right? So um, I wanted to pick something small, inexpensive, light, easy to make, um, and in a viral niche. So what I came up with was shoelaces, okay? And I came up with shoelaces because, uh, you know, I like sneakers. I don't know if you can see these. I got my Jordans on today, but I've always, I've always liked sneakers. I've always liked sneaker culture. Um, so I've known for a long time that this is a tremendously passionate, viral, and big community. People love sneakers. I mean, unfortunately, people get killed over them, right? I mean, Jordans, Nikes, uh, Adidas, the Yeezys, right? All these sneakers have a mass cult following. So I knew this was something that I'd be able to step in on the marketing side, create some content and get some things to go viral by just knowing what I know about marketing and social and SEO. So that's why I went with shoelaces. Um, in the process I'm using, I still haven't gotten my shipment in yet from China, but I went on Alibaba. Uh, which is a, a Chinese website. I'll give you the, the URL under here. Uh, you can check it out for yourself. But I went on Alibaba and just started, you know, looking for suppliers of people who sold shoelaces. And I wanted them to a very specific length, size, um, and style, right? Because there's flat laces, there's round laces, there's oval laces, there's boot laces, wax, this and that. So I came up with a very small three set of laces that I knew that I could sell because I was going to sell them as replacement laces for a certain type of sneaker. Um, so I've been going through the process of interviewing suppliers um, and actually getting supplies shipped over here now as samples um, to check them out and see if it's something that I want to buy into. I mean, they go for about 50 cents a pair. So I'm figuring I can probably mark them up just doing the research on Amazon. Other people are selling for about uh, between six and like $12. So if I can find somewhere in there, that's pretty good margin, right? For 50 cents per pair to sell it for like six, 12 bucks, that's a really good margin. So that leaves in a lot of budget for me to do some marketing as well. Um, once things get rolling. So, so that's where I'm at with the product. I also uh, spent a lot of time designing a custom site. So basically my plan is to use Amazon as the fulfillment engine to let people check out on Amazon because, uh, well, for a number of reasons. Number, uh, number one, Amazon has one-click shipping, right? One-click purchase, which is huge, high, high conversion rate. It's got next day shipping because I'm gonna be using fulfillment by Amazon. So pretty much I'm not gonna be mailing out shoelaces one by one. I'm actually sending them in bulk to a fulfillment center and then as the orders come in Amazon ships them for you So that's another reason right a huge perk to use in Amazon Especially when you're selling these small products because you don't have to deal with you know shit another one came in another one came in Got to go to the post office. It sucks. So Amazon handles all that for you. They take a cut, but it's well worth it, right? so <clears throat> You know, so for that reason, the fulfillment by Amazon, I want to use solely Amazon for fulfillment. The one-click purchase, uh, the built-in trust factor that people just trust Amazon, um, that it's uh, its own marketing engine, right? People use Amazon as a search engine. So again, knowing what I know about marketing, I'm confident that I can get my shoelaces to rank in Amazon search, which is its own marketing engine. Um, and then finally, Amazon is a ridiculously powerful site, which means that it ranks really well in organic search. So again, knowing what I know about SEO, I I know that I can rank those product pages in organic search too for when people are searching for shoelaces. So um, for all that reason, I'm very attracted to Amazon. I'm very excited about the, the potential because there's so many ways uh, to market this and, ha and, and, and do it well, right? Um, again, as long as the product is of good quality, you know, I'm just competing against other people selling shoelaces and I'm confident that I can do it better because of my marketing background. So um, again, just been designing the site. It's with my developer now. We're actually gonna use some customization on the site to make the site e-commerce and actually allow you to check out on Amazon from the site. Um, and the reason why I'm building a site um, is because I'm a content marketer, you know? I know how to drive traffic through content. And again, because this is such a viral niche, I'm gonna be creating a ton of content. I already started on the blog, um, but resource guides, you know, how to tie your shoelaces, all this stuff, get it on YouTube, get those to rank. So there's a huge opportunity 
to get all, all this traffic going in Amazon, on YouTube, um, on the site, on the blog, through outreach, through ranking the blog for SEO type terms, um, and then also on social media. And that's really where I'm at now. So um, I've actually spent the last week just, just set up some Facebook ads. I've only spent 70 bucks um, and gotten about 800 likes on the page now. And you're probably saying, you know, page likes don't make money. Uh, Facebook doesn't, Facebook is, I just saw an incredible data piece. Facebook drives more on online sales, I think it was. Well, more online sales from social, for sure, more than Pinterest even. Um, and it drives like 30% of the web's traffic. It's just crazy, right? Facebook is a juggernaut, and I want to build a presence on Facebook, even if it's not as a sales engine, right? I just want to have an active Facebook page because, um, again, it's a very viral niche, and I, the content that I'm posting now is starting to get likes. I'm seeing the organic reach pick up, pick up much more than on the other pages that I've worked on in less viral niches, right? So I'm getting page likes for about eight cents a piece. Um, I plan to spend a lot of money to build that page because then it also becomes a resource for me. Um, you know, influence influencer marketing is going to be big for what I'm going to be doing. I'll be reaching out to people that are big and popular on social media that create content for me to work with. And if I have a big monster page with 100,000 likes and it's very active and it's a little mini brand in itself, I can then go to people, influencers, and say, hey, uh, why don't we do a share for a share? You know, I'll share something on my page, promote you, you share something on your Twitter or your Instagram or your Snapchat and promote me. Um, so we can cross promote. I have a value proposition to them as opposed to being like with most brands are like, hey, like do you want to post my picture on your Instagram? They're like, for what? You're going to pay me or you're not. And I'm not going to pay someone to do that because the ROI isn't there to pay somebody a thousand dollars to post on Instagram. But if we can work something out and do a value exchange and have me promote them and then promote me, that's the end goal, right? So I'm going to, again, use the Facebook page in itself as a marketing tool. Um, so I'm running traffic to Facebook. Um, I have a Twitter bot going, an Instagram bot going, and a Pinterest bot going. I'm just testing those out to see if I can build some communities there as well. Um, you know, this is going to be a massive, massive social play, and uh, I'm pretty excited about that too because I think I can really get these things to go viral. So. That's the long-winded explanation of where I'm at now, what I've done in the last two weeks. Um, I've also done a lot of the basic SEO stuff. I got Google Tag Manager set up today, setting up a lot of advanced tracking on the site. Um, gonna do some email stuff in the future. Uh, and then just focusing on building content. I'm looking to hire a blogger right now, somebody who can manage that for me. Uh, but to date, I've spent well under, I think $600 uh, to get where I'm at now. And that's, you know, bootstrapped to the max. Um, and you know, I'm thinking that the majority of my budget up front is gonna to go to Facebook ads, and then once I get the product live on the site, potentially some pay-per-click, uh, but we'll see. You know, That's why I'm doing this, to, to keep you guys updated and to follow along with how this is going, and, and hopefully you can pick, some, pick up some tactics of your own and really motivate you to do this yourself because you know, it's just a tremendous opportunity. If you have any idea about marketing, you can find these niches where you're com not competing against other marketers, like in the digital marketing world, obviously, um, but you're competing against people that are, have a good business, they're good content creators, whatever, but they're not marketers. So you can easily kind of out clever them um, and figure something out. So this was episode one, very long winded, very long rant. Uh, I'm excited to hear what you guys think. Please leave comments. I'm gonna be very active uh, on this YouTube channel and answering all, everything. Um, so just leave the comments in there and uh, we'll talk then.